You Uh-oh. don't need the meat to be strong. I'm 72 years old doing a 75 push-ups. I can already do them at 72 and I'm not eating meat. Hey, friends and listeners of the Switch for Good podcast. Yep, that's you. I have some really exciting news. Dotsie and I have started a Switch for Good podcast Facebook group. We created it so we can build a community of fans that will help us improve the show and deliver on the topics that you want to learn more about. So we want to hear what your favorite content is, what you want more of, and what you want less of. And if you like the length of the show, Dotsie and I are always talking about the length of the show, right, Dotsie? Yes. We want to tailor our show around the needs and desires of our incredible listeners, almost half a million of you. And it's really simple to join. Just go to our Switch for Good Facebook page, that's Switch, the number four, and then Good, and then click on Groups. And there we are, the Switch for Good podcast chat. You can post directly in the group, share ideas, talk to other listeners, and connect with like-minded folks. So go, run, join our Facebook group and tell us what you want. Born and raised in East Los Angeles and forged in the fires of adversity, cookbook author Chef Babette Davis burst onto the culinary scene with her renowned vegan restaurant, Stuff I Eat, in Inglewood, California, where the soul food platter is one of the many, many must-try dishes. An ageless paragon of fitness and vibrant health, Chef Babette has legions of social media followers who love seeing her posts of this incredibly fit 72-year-old working out or cooking or in a bikini. Yes, in a bikini on her 70th birthday. You got a full (laughs) week of bikinis shots, which were beautiful. So check out her Instagram. If she's not prepping delicious dishes in the kitchen of her restaurant, teaching cooking classes, or hosting the competition cooking show Peeled, you'll find her running stairs all around Los Angeles. (laughs) I saw her win an award just a couple days ago at the Mercy for Animals Gala, and she was inspiring and funny, and most of all, she was real. So Dotsie and I are so happy to have her on the show today. Welcome, Chef Babette. Oh my God, you are so sweet. (laughs) No, we are so excited to have you. you. We have been fans of you for so long and thank you for what you've done for Switch for Good. Um, You've done some amazing work with them, but I wanna go back to talk about the beginnings of your health journey because it really began when you were age 40 in 1990 when you first met your husband, Rondell Davis. So tell us about that first date and how he changed the course of your life. You know, when I, when I met Rondell, I was um, really just having a rough time with food pretty much. And um, I, 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 he, he fed me my very first vegan meal. So that was sort of kind of like the first date, but really the first date, he took me up to Griffith Park and he ran the whole thing past the observatory backwards. And I'm struggling, thinking to myself, this man is sick something is wrong with him running this entire mountain backwards but afterwards I understood that if he could do that a whole mountain backwards one day I'm going to be able to do Griffith Park maybe at a walker's pace but in a running mode for sure and I can do that right now but he fed me that day and he fed me my very first vegan meal it was tofu string bean some type of a cracked wheat bread a salad uh, with something other than um, head lettuce. Yeah, you know that. Iceberg. Iceberg, Iceberg yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one. Um, and um, tofu. I kept calling the tofu chicken, right? But I could actually digest the food. That was my challenge normally. I had no knowledge of food combinations, no- nothing like that. I just, I was, I was dumb like everybody else eating. And um he offered me two books. He had one copy of Fit for Life, a hard copy that had been actually autographed. And uh, come on, I wasn't really that into all that reading. Okay, come on now. But he was kind of cute. So I was like, uh, and he was like, and I really want my book back. So that meant I had to go ahead and get through the book. 
So he oh. gave me Fit for Life, and then I got volume two myself, and he also uh, lent me the Mucusless Diet Healing System by Professor Arnold's Eric. Needless to say, since I was forced to read the book, I read the books and it addressed everything that I was dealing with. Every time I sat down and ate food, I was totally addicted to sugar. My mama put sugar in everything. Her spaghetti sauce, you could drink it with a glass of milk. It tasted like dessert. And it was just an addiction. We were just totally a mess. Um, my teeth were a mess. They were all, I had to wear braces and I always, I was always dealing with cavities and just bad skin. I couldn't even wear anything backless. Oh my God, heaven forbid, I, 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 I took my shirt off. And um, I started practicing changing the lifestyle, if you will, um, through the recommendations uh, um, offered in these books. And um, my life began to change. So this Just one like meal, that. that is, it is incredible. We hear so many people talk about, they, you know, they, they kind of tiptoed in and, and started to notice some changes, but, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a lot going from standard American diet and animal-based diet to go to a plant-based diet and like all plants, right? And that's, you had tofu and right. salad and lots of greens in right. that first meal. Right. So there was a digestive um change in, in, in you in that one meal that gave you, you said, all right, I got to go down this path. I mean, there wasn't any di digestive issues because of so much fiber. It was just, it just felt fantastic. It was unbelievable. One. Unbelievable. Mm. I wasn't because I was a belcher I, and I had acid reflux all mm -hmm. the time, all the time. Reflux, whatever. Reflux. <laughs> yeah. I, all the time I had it. And, um, this one meal, I didn't have any of that going on. You know what I mean? Um, I, and nothing lodged in my teeth. That was another thing. I, 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 the, the tofu, it tasted like chicken, but um, it wasn't doing what chicken normally did for me or with me. And so, yeah, I, I transitioned pretty much overnight, ladies, pretty much overnight. It wasn't just the meal, though. It was probably a little bit rondel. Well, I mean, you know, Rondo had to change too because he wasn't vegan. Oh, he and wasn't. What, no, what happened was when I said, I'm doing this, I am doing this, he was like, oh, okay, thanks. I, I, I guess I <laughs> <Good> am <luck. laughs> too. And then, consequently, we transitioned together. Oh, I see. And um, we, neither one of us are looking back, really and truly. It's so, such a blessing. Such a a blessing because really and truly this was back in 1990 think about how much crap we eat now along with the processed food and and by by educating myself i didn't go towards processed foods i went towards real food mm -hmm. and when we open the restaurant that's what we serve mm -hmm. is real food i make my own burger patties out of mushrooms and nuts and you understand mm -hmm. so um yeah. Yeah. That's how we did it. <laughs> what was it in those books that really grabbed you? Like fit for life. I recall was about Ugh. food combining and you had yes. food for breakfast. I just, that's all I remember yeah. <laughs> from it. Cause I had a friend who was on it and she loved it by the way. Well, let me tell you that it was a, it was um, such a blessing for a couple to, de to decide to write a book uh, addressing what so many of in the human species go through after they eat a sit down and eat a plate of food. I I know that every barbecue I ever went to, my dear always had a fruit salad and she always had those little balls of melon and strawberries and grapes and every fruit she could imagine she'd have it in that bowl. Along with all of the barbecue and the, the, you know, the ribs and potato salad and coleslaw and everybody sitting back piling up all this food at one sitting and wondering why they feel like crap afterwards. And it's because of poor combinations. And then for me to learn that a melon should be eaten alone, for me to learn that fruit should be eaten on an empty stomach, for me to learn that there are three different types of fruit, sub-acids, acid, sweet, 
Which ones, which sweet goes with subacid, but maybe sweet doesn't go with acid. For me to learn all of that and understand then why I felt the way that I felt because I was misusing myself due to a lack of knowledge. And that is why it's so important for human beings to educate themselves. We have been misled and misguided by people that don't know the hell they're talking about. Mm -hmm. You do not need to go drink another animal's milk, Lord. So tell me a little bit, can we just, I wanna dive in, Dr. <laughs> if it's okay, can we just dive into a little bit about food combining? My understanding is that, and, and it sounds like you don't, you don't agree with this, that, that a lot of that has been debunked. No, as... no, it has not. Sorry. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. So and tell us what it that, is. No, uh -uh. let me tell you this. Okay. When you eat carbohydrates and proteins together, you are miscombining your food. Because you have different digestive enzymes to break down a carbohydrate, a protein. And when you mix it in your mouth all together, how is the mouth or the anything supposed to separate it? So each one of those, I mean, whatever it is that breaks them down can do that. No, you've combined it. It's all together. So what normally happens, your doctor gives you something to help you digest your food. You're the only species on the planet because you don't know how to combine your food. That's why they sell you Tums. Uh, I don't even understand why humans have to medicate themselves after they eat. Now, come on. You know, come on. Now, come on. Come on now. Well, it can't be just species. from the food combining, though, because there, there's food combining. I mean, I ate at your restaurant about passed out at the vibrant flavors and the deliciousness and the savoriness. I mean, Jason and I sat there at your table in your kitchen and you just did all the talking because we were just like, <laughs> it was so good. But there's carbohydrates on there and there's protein in there. You are having massive issues digesting your food. I don't eat that way. I don't eat that way. Key, I got it now. Okay, you're coming from a place where you had I'm to completely reboot. I'm coming from a reboot. place where I had to understand what, what, was, what was this doing to me? So now if I eat, if I eat, say for instance, if I have some orange juice and maybe I'm eat, I've been eating some nuts, I'm going to mess myself up. Me, I have a very sensitive system. So food combining is massively important to me. I practice it all the time. And when I don't, I know I've screwed up. Mm. what's the opportunity for a healthier gut when you eat fruit alone that was very interesting to me I I, I do feel better if I just eat a like a whole thing of mango and water and it's just like a well, snack well, in the middle of the day and it's if alone you're, if you're eating it on an empty stomach it's only going to be in the stomach for so long uh -huh. when, when you're eating heavier food you're, you've got more time for that stuff to be in your gut but if you're on an empty stomach a, 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 a sub-acid fruit and apple is only going to be in there, or grapes are only going to be in there for about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Boom. They're moving on out of the gut into the intestines or wherever else they go. But you're talking about food that's actually got some hours to hang out in your stomach. Mm -hmm. And then you pile fruit on top of that. Well, what it's going to do is rot it. That's what it's going to do. Because the fruit can't leave the it. stomach. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Can't go anywhere. Right. It's now all combined. That's it's all too, together. It's really too bad that we got a guest that really wasn't very passionate about anything. Yeah, I know <laughs> she's she's boring and, and dry <laughs> and tired, and you just I want to sleep right now. Uh, I know. <laughs> that, <laughs> that makes that actually makes sense to me. And and tell me about the the second book that you mentioned. What was in there that <gasps> uh, was that a juicing book? The Mucusless Diet Healing System by Professor Arnold Eret. This guy was so before his time. B Professor Arnold Eret says, I don't care what disease name you give it. It's an overload of inflammation, oh. period. Oh. So he talks about eating mucus less like that. You know what I'm saying? What is that? Not what so, does that mean? Not what so is... much. Say for instance, all you eat, you get up in the morning and you have pancakes made with uh, um, what that regular flour, mm -hmm. uh, that, that glutinous yeah, oh. flour, that's going to cause you a lot of inflammation. And then you have a big burger uh, 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 for lunch, 
with bread and cheese and mayo and all this kind of stuff, you're creating more and more inflammation. So you have to take a look at all of that processed crap that you get a hold to, all of those foods that create a lot of inflammation and what happens with us. We wind up getting us cold after a while. Your, your, your mucus coming out of every darn where because it's time now to cleanse. You're overloaded with inflammation, mucus, however you want to say it. And I, that's why I do usually a juice cleanse three times a year, pretty much three times a year. I got to clean it out. I have to abstain from eating and just get my cayenne pepper, even if I just master cleanse. But most of the times it's a juice cleanse. I have to abstain from eating after a while because we all get mucus stuff. I don't even know how we, I really don't know how we avoid it unless you're a fruitarian or um, all you eat is live food constantly. Right. So. I remember when we were with you uh, filming the, the video to Howard Schultz to tell him to get his SHIT Act together. together. Get it together. Yeah, yeah you said folks, that much go, more go lovely look at that. than I, I do. Just, I, I want to just, yeah, I want to interject. Sorry, Dottie, but okay. yeah, you all should go look at that. It's, you'll find it at, on the switchforgood.org website, yeah. but if you just Google Babette, Chef Babette, it will come up um, very quickly or just Chef Babette Starbucks. It'll come up right. Yeah. And you will see her telling Mr. Schultz some of her mind. And, That's why and, I was checking him. Yes. Yeah, it was fabulous. But you had the same energy, if not more that you had today and you were on a juice cleanse. I remember talking about it. And then Jason and I rudely ate all that food in front of you. And <laughs> <laughs> it's so good though. It was so fun to visit your restaurant. So tell me, I, I haven't done a juice fast. And I oftentimes hear kind of oh, after the first 24 hours or something, you get this extraordinary burst of energy. But obviously you're not taking that many calories in. So that kind of kills that the calories alone give you energy. Like that kills that theory. What is it? What, what are the what are the mechanisms of a juice cleanse that that brings up so much vibrant energy for people? Well, first of all, you're not you're not spent waste time. I mean, spending any time digesting crap. I, most mm -hmm. of the time, there is no digestion going on. Digestion takes a lot of energy, in particular if you're eating really really heavy. Uh, heavy mm. type food. So that's why uh, you're tired after eating big food. It's basically you always, just because all the blood the is going to your you're like, stomach. Uh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So okay. when you're abstaining from food, the, the challenge, however, is that you're getting enough fluid because now you know we cannot eat for days, but we we do have to we have to have enough fluid. Hydration, we have to get enough sure. water. We have to hydrate ourselves. And water is massively important because I don't know we we on this planet, we, we drink everything else and the human body needs H2O. So <laughs> with my cleanse, I force myself to drink more water, but the cleanse that I love the most because I'm getting a lot of nutrients when I do the green juice cleanse. You don't have to work. I'm getting more nutrients than I'd be if I was eating every day cooked food because heat is killing, killing the nutrition in the food any dang way. But if I'm juice cleansing, I'm good to go on nutrients. However, if I decide I'm going to do the master cleanse, I'm really, really, really trying to get rid of a whole bunch of inflammation. Mm -hmm. That's cayenne pepper. Uh, it, it was it, it normally is maple syrup, cayenne pepper. And I like to put a little ginger in mine because I'm hooked on ginger. And um, I drink that thing for at least 15 days and, along with the water. Um, and I do a... Um, you know, I get, I eliminate real good. They have a little recipe on there on how you should eliminate and it works. It's a, a soft, salt water enema and, and it works. If nobody, if you're not hip to the master cleanse, Google it. They have the recipe, the whole nine yards for you. That's you, the, that's the best one. Do Ooh. you, do you, you keep the maple syrup or you don't do the maple syrup? I, I, I use agave now. Uh, I see. Okay. And Got it works it. just fine with that cleanse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Great. So you started eating differently right away, uh, you and your new beau, right. uh, who's soon to become your husband. But um, right. so what changed after you, uh, you, you mentioned you had had a lot of health problems or you didn't feel that great. 
What changed? Oh yeah, I, you know, I grew up with asthma, suffering from asthma. I had really bad eczema. I missed a lot of time out of school because I, I was so inflamed. I had a lot of earaches. I've lost hair before from impetigo. I couldn't digest my food. I was massively constipated and could have won any belching contest had there ever been one because I had the biggest belches of any one on the planet. I don't care. You could have been a giant. I still would have kicked your butt in belch. <laughs> um, and, and what were you eating before? What was your, and were you exercising at all before? No, I wasn't. I wasn't exercising. I was eating everything most people ate. And, and since I'm on the east side of LA, black community, yeah, we ate chitlins. Um, and you know, chitlins are the intestines of a pig. And we even had to clean the chitlins. So I cleaned the shit out of the chitlins, lady, and then turned around and ingested them. I saw the poop in the chitlins, but because of how the human brain just gets all tweaked out and whatever somebody tells you to do, if they tell you to do it long enough, you, you lose your own senses. Why? was I eating poopy chitlins, <laughs> but everybody that eats them has yeah. seen the poop in them. So it's, it's just a matter of conditioning, yes? Mm -hmm. and, and all of that type of food, milk, just gave me the blues. I was miserable if I ever ingested dairy, any kind of dairy, ice cream, it did not matter. I was miserable, miserable every time I ate. Mm -hmm. It got to the point I told my mother, I think I'm allergic to chitterlings because we always had them in the winter. <laughs> of course I'm allergic yeah. to another man's intestines. I should be. But how many doctors tell you to eat liver? Because you are low in iron. Yeah. You don't have to eat no liver. Who's liver? What is the function of a liver in any being? What is that function of a liver? Why in the hell do I want to eat it? Yeah. It's, it, it's I need a, some spinach. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that hard. I it's can just drink not some that hard. spinach and get all the iron I need. You know what I mean? So it's just about educating yourself because we've been, I'm going to tell you like Malcolm X said, we've been bamboozled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, we sure have. We sure yeah. have. And yeah. you're out to set the record straight. I'm setting it straight. What are they going to do to me? I'm old anyway. I don't care. I'm telling it like it is. <laughs> so you're on this magnificent journey and your energy is improving and your skin problems are going away. The bloat is going away, the allergies, then. and I you start moving, running. you start moving. And then yes. that's like the other 50%, right? Like, yeah. Well, so you start, you just started getting energy. So you start running and then you decide I'm going to open a restaurant because I want to well, share what we this did, with people. Well, this is what we did once. Well, first, when we were going to get married, we got married at home. And um, so I was like, well, should we order chicken? And he looked at me and he goes, do we eat chicken? And I said, no. And he goes, then they eat what we eat. Right. And we realized that what we serve them, they absolutely loved. Nobody missed flesh. And from that moment on, we started thinking, why don't we share some of the food that we eat? People would love this because I'm not a trained chef. You know, it was just your deal is you take care of the money part and get all the equipment and stuff. And then I'll do the food part. And that's what we did. We wound up at Agape Spiritual Center and we were on that parking lot for six years. Eventually, the lines became block long lines and we knew we had a good product. We were on our way to Jamaica one year on, and uh, walking down Market Street. The doors to Stuff I Eat were open. We went in, met the owner. By the time we came back from Jamaica, he was inviting us to come back. He gave me first last month rent and a little security deposit. You can take this. It took us four years to open the doors, but we wow. did that. We had no money. When we opened, we didn't have trash cans, tables, or chairs. We had we had the, you know, I think we had the three bistro tables. That's all we had. We didn't even have trash cans. So in a community where chicken and chitlins are, uh, you know, a, a, Girl, considered necessary. 
What was the reaction? <laughs> they would walk in. Sometimes I even, I, if there, I have a video I posted on Instagram from the event the other night. They would walk in and not see any meat on the menu and I'd chase them. I would <laughs> run after them and I'd be like, get back in here. Let me at least give you a taco. Try one of my tacos. And I'd give them a free meal and they would turn around and sit there and buy food and would become some of my best customers. But I gave away a lot of tacos. Trust yeah. that. Yeah. Because they were coming in there. You ain't even got chicken. Do you realize you're in Inglewood and no chicken? <laughs> yeah, you, you, you won them over with the just pure deliciousness of your cooking. Well, you, yeah, you're such a talent. And, and you, it just tastes like regular food, baby. That's yeah. the, that's the, yes. when my husband it gave does. it to me the first meal, I kept calling the tofu chicken. It was the way he prepped it. And uh, we just took it from there. And the, the cool thing about Ron, I have to give it to Ron. Ron was very ethical. And I could, cause I can remember one time on the truck, I, um, I, I was making these horrible oatmeal cookies. Well, I've just learned how to make vegan oatmeal cookies, child. The, ooh, honey, they were so dry and horrible, but they, look, he, organic oats. And the only place we would get the or, oats when we were out at Griffith Park, there was Nature's, Nature, Nature Mart, Nature mm -hmm. Mart. That's what that little store was. And we would stop there and go to the bulk bin and get the oats. Well, I'm out of oats. So I say to him, do me a favor. Why don't you run over to Vines and just get me some oats? And he said, do they have organic oats? And I was like, man, come on. I'm just making some oatmeal cookies. Just, can you just cook me some oats? He goes, but we tell these people that these cookies are organic. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, it's just for this weekend. Come on. He was like, if I'm going to tell these people that these cookies are organic, then I'll just drive over to Nature Mart from, and I'll get us some organic oats. And at that point, I said, okay, you win. I'll never yeah. do that again. Oh, yeah, I'll yeah. never, whatever it is I say I'm selling you, I will sell you. I felt badly after that. He drove all the way over there to get those organic oats for me. But that's the kind of dude he is. Mm. <laughs> anyway. Well, yeah, nice. I was going to keep y'all's ass. I was going to just give you some Uncle Ben's and keep it moving. <laughs> Nobody's going to know. <laughs> like some Rondel. He's a good man. So you, you said moving into all the other ways that you keep yourself healthy and so vibrant. You've said before that healthy aging is not just about the food and ingesting the food, but about everything you are ingesting. Yeah. Take, take us down that route. Elaborate on that. What do you mean? Okay. I'm not big into now. I'm not going to say that if we all went out one night and we had some champagne or a glass of wine, I would ingest some. Yes. But I don't have that hanging out in my home. That's not something I do. Um, because of the way that he and I um, transitioned, right. it it became just a part of the lifestyle. So we both like, I, I, I don't, I didn't have to work today, but I was in the restaurant making sure we had our juice because <laughs> I had to give him several jars of juice and I had to have juice for myself. Um, and, and I don't know, it's just, it, it's just um, everything clean, learning, learning that organic is best because these people are lying to us. GMOs are horrible. They're, they're half of the food that you get in boxes and, and bags are, are just, un, unless they're beans or nuts or something like that, most of that crap is engineered, engineered bioengineered. It's food-like substances and understanding what nourishes you and understanding that you need to stay present at all times. Don't hang so much out yesterday. And please don't worry about how you're going to pay the rent on the first, but just don't blow this moment off right now, learning to stay present and learning to be fair and honest. Um, it really just really changed and loving. Oh my God, the importance. Now that's the one thing I got from my mother. My mother was married to an Italian. My mother had a third grade education. She could barely read or write. But she had the personality of just 
if you looked at her, you just saw a big giant heart because she just understood unconditional love for all people. And she did domestic work. It didn't matter to her. Humans were humans. You, ha you had your job, I got my job. This is how I roll. So all of that together creates self-love and self-care. It just, you know what I'm saying? It's, there's no, more, no one on this planet more important than moi. So if I don't get my ass up in the morning and go work out, nobody is going to do that for me at all. So I don't care that I'm 72. My quality of life when I'm 93 needs to be as awesome as it is today. I am on no medication. I, I can stand up, put my shoe and my sock on and balance myself through the entire process. And I can tie it while I'm balancing myself. If I go down, I can get up. I don't need a life alert to get my ass up. Yeah. But it's all on me as it is all on you. It is your human experience, your yeah. journey. But the one thing that I will never do, I will never screw over any other being. I will never screw over my planet home if I know that I am doing the wrong thing. Yeah. Then I'm going to fix it. Mm -hmm. Because I am one with this, with you, with all of life, period, over now. You're trying to take your ass into outer space to do what? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we've Penis yeah. train. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot it into space because that seems important or not. I don't know. <laughs> what? Uh, tell us what you do each day. What is part of your ritual, your routine or your rituals each day that keep you balanced and on your path? First of all, I, I generally go to bed really, really early. Um, I, um, I, I could fall asleep at six o'clock in the evening. However, I will awaken at 1, 30, 2 o'clock yeah. because of a bathroom run. My, my whole system is just like a clock. So I wake up, I use the bathroom. Generally, I turn on the shower. I get ready to start doing that by... 3 34 o'clock I'm in full makeup ready to start my day I need to get into stuff I eat early enough because I no longer hang out there all day I am 72 years old if you don't make me cook all the food please don't make me stay here all day long I go work out I'm working out with uh, Dr. Shabnam Islam she's the other host on the show Peeled yeah. um she is amazing. And what she's doing with me now is my very first time really working with weights. I've never really worked with weights before. It's always been generally my own body weight. That wow, you have those guns? You never I know, worked but out that's weights? all been from push-ups and just wow. my own body weight. Yeah. So yeah. now I'm, I'm actually, you know, using weights. But, and then after Important I'm done, I, I, I come home and I, I usually chill unless I, forget I have a zoom call or <laughs> but yeah. I'm not gonna tell anyone no one knows <laughs> but, but have, you eaten? Very, have you eaten very very simple simple uh existence and I love it it's very simple and, and and during this time have you eaten anything do you, you or do you oh yeah but, but see I'm or... going to work to work because I get my juice first thing in the morning mm -hmm. usually I'm back on making a raw plate for stuff I eat I just totally missed it but when I went to Houston I went to a restaurant and the way that they do their raw is just so cool they have raw options there for you and you can just put together your own plate it's so much easier than me deciding I'm gonna make a raw lasagna today and maybe only three people come in and get a piece of lasagna you know what I mean so now I just make raw options and you can put together your own raw plate if you so mm -hmm. desire um so and I don't require, Rondo, neither one of us, we were just talking about that the other day. We just do not eat a lot of bulk. You know, we're, we're the quinoa people with the raw kale and, you know, that's, that's how we're rolling. But you don't need a lot of the comfort food. I, do, I can't. If mm. it's all cooked up and fried, dyed, laid to the side too much, I know 
you know, I'm going to be built. I don't know. I just don't, it's not, it doesn't give me the same satisfaction as yeah. if I'm eating lighter, like quinoa doesn't bother me. Um, you know, I can eat, uh, I make these barbecue cubed beets now. They're awesome. I, th that kind of stuff doesn't really bother me, but too much going, like Thanksgiving, oh my. And I prepare Thanksgiving for the restaurant. That is, that is, that's just way, way, way too much stuff for yeah. any human to sit down and ingest at once. It is. Come on now. Yeah, that is. So you, so you eat a, like you'll eat bulky, like a fair amount of quinoa and kale, just not the dense types of foods that we're speaking about. But see, about. if I put together a raw plate, actually, mm -hmm. I might, maybe I've taken blueberries and balsamic vinegar and I've made a delicious, uh, um, and I'm using a lot of sea moss now. So I'll make a really delicious sea moss, balsamic vinegar uh, salad dressing. So I chop up kale for that. And then I love garlic kale. So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll blend up some cashews with some garlic and stuff and pour that on that kale. So I got two kales. Now I got a scoop of quinoa. Maybe I'll have my barbecue beets. And then uh, maybe I'll have some, oh, some type of a, a yam salad. I don't care if it has raisins, walnuts. I don't care, a yam salad. Um, and then maybe all I did was soak some wild rice and seasoned it up and, and put it in the dehydrator. You know mm -hmm. how it'll open mm -hmm. up and I have that. That is a giant bowl of food. Oh my God, but I'm like a greedy monster tearing into that food because I get so many different fresh flavors and nothing's hot and burning my mouth up and it's mm -hmm. all alive in my mouth and the flavors are amazing. You can feel and, it. And down. that combination, all those different foods don't bother you, right? No. Because they're mm. simple and no. more yeah. Uh, easy, raw, easy from the earth. But, yeah, most of them are live foods and all I'm eating is pretty much vegetables. I'm not eating fruits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just was curious real quick about um, sea moss because our uh, one of our wonderful sponsors of the podcast is Shri Moo Cheese, uh, Julie Pyatt, who I'm sure you know. And she does a lot of sea moss in her cheese. And I don't, I just don't even know what, what is that? What is that flavor like? What does it do? How is it good for us? You know what? I've got a friend that got me on to sea moss the way that I'm on it right now. Mm -hmm. And all I know is, and, and let me just be a thousand percent honest with you ladies. I can't tell you how sea moss is making me feel, okay? Because hmm. I feel good all the time. Yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I just feel awesome. I ingest sea moss like I ingested E3 Live. E3 yeah. Live is, is chlorophyll. I know chlorophyll is good for the human species. Mm -hmm. So it's a part of my supplements. Um, uh, sea moss right now is just a part of my supplements. So what I do to get it is like, say for instance, I'm just going to make a turmeric, orange turmeric salad dressing. And then I'll take my sea moss, two tablespoons of my turmeric sea moss, put it in the salad dressing, blend it up. Bam. I got some nutrients right there via sea moss. Okay. Is it like a powder? Like they've no, they put I it into a powder? One that's all, uh, uh, it's already been, um, what do you call it? Uh, not jet like jellied up. Uh, oh. What is the gelled up? Like it's the gel type, and it comes in oh. jars. I love okay. it. I absolutely love it. But like I said, don't come asking me. Well, how did it? What does it? You already feel great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, speaking more of food, um, tell us about if someone were to come to your restaurant, Dotsie. Yeah, I know you've been. I haven't had the pleasure yet, but. Um, what, what would be a dish you would recommend if they want to eat sort of like you? And what would they, what dish would you, would you recommend if they want a comfort food? I would give them the quinoa bowl if they wanted something like me. Quinoa bowl is fun. Uh, it does have cubed tofu on there. It's cubed jerk tofu with the barbecue beets. It's got yams. And um, then we, we just have uh, onion and, and uh, all that kind of stuff. It's just such an awesome bowl. So the quinoa bowl, if they want it light and fun. Um, but you know, if you want to get down, you know, if you brother, if you brother man, you just want to really, really get down, then you better get the soul food platter or uh, okay. the burger. Now we serve the burger. Like I said, I make my own patties from scratch. 
um, Ron and I, the reason we call the restaurant stuff I eat is because we will ingest this stuff. The enchilada pie, you know, if you're kind of girly and you don't know, that casserole is kind of cool, I think. Um, but really for, for guys, I would say the soul food platter, um, lava burrito, that's a good one for a guy and the burgers. Yeah. Awesome. But everything is really pretty good, you guys. Really, you know, it's just fun food. It just tastes like regular food. You don't even know you're really eating food without flesh, yeah. you know? Yeah. I had the soul food platter, but I took your advice. Did you do the, the burger. It, I, I did. Well, Jason and I got both because we, we, oh, okay. we share them. But it's, it's me being from uh, the South and in Kentucky, I grew up on all of that. So really, right. I love the, the the collard greens and the and the pe- and the black eyed peas and the right. beans and, the, and yeah, just you, the way that it was familiar. all done. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. But I took the burger home to my husband, which he just about died for because that's what she said. Now you wrote a you wrote a cookbook um, called. I'm Passion. Let me tell you. Yeah, I, I'm so terrible. I have. A, I told you, my mama put sugar in everything I ate. So. Uh, the only book thus far. I have another book. All the recipes complete. It's called the, the book is going to be called Stuff Your Stuff. But I'm, I just haven't done it yet. But this one, this one on Amazon, fifty plus recipes using the cashew nut. Mm, mm, mm. I just love this book. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. So it's called Cash In on Cashews. Cash In on Cashews. And uh, so are they? Tell us about some of the recipes, because wow, fifty <laughs> recipes, and 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 uh, are all of and them? All or desserts, some of them no they're bake. All desserts. They're so they're so absolutely. And if you have a nut allergy, I'm sorry, you don't <laughs> need to buy my book. <laughs> I know that would suck so bad. <laughs> nut allergies. <sighs> yeah, but girl, I have got some. Of, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little spectrum thing on Friday, early Friday morning, and I'm taking the book and I'm doing one of the desserts in the book and it's going to be a yam pie. So we'll take, um, this is, wait, I don't know if you guys can, can, can you see it? But that's a yeah. slice of pie. It looks yeah. delicious. And with, with a caramel, a pecan caramel on top. Um, mm. But yeah, that's my book. And uh, you can get it on Amazon. Mm-hmm. And what's your favorite recipe from the book? And, 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 can, and can we, if we go to Stuff I Eat, do you have any of those recipes? Well, I try to have some of these raw desserts usually, but I'm gonna tell you what people really love. When they so these are all stuff. raw, right? They're these all raw. raw. Mm-hmm. Uh, they oh. love the um, uh, banana pudding. I do a raw banana pudding. They just, you know, people just love banana pudding after they eat it. So I try to, and the avocado parfaits, People, mm-hmm. and so I do more of what people request. They also like lemon cheesecake. That's always huge. So I try to have one of those in the refrigeration every day that we're open, at least one. But we're very frugal. We're very careful since COVID. Um, uh, it's been, it's been, it wasn't easy, but we're blessed that we're still open. Um, and so, um, Starting, I think, uh, early October, we're going to be closed for two weeks because uh, after COVID, uh, all of our employees are gone. It's just myself, Danielle, um, our cashier, and our maintenance guy. So we only have four employees there. Everybody has been working nonstop without any time off. So my Mm -hmm. husband said he's going to do some maintenance in the restaurant and he's going to close it down for two weeks and everybody can do whatever they want for two weeks. And um, so at least everybody that that's within our ear will know, don't come to stuff I eat early October for two weeks. We're out. And then are you going to be hiring? Because when I went, there weren't tables and chairs post uh, COVID. We have have tables and chairs now. Oh, awesome. So they're dining in again. Okay. Yes, okay. it's it's good. I'm happy about it. And since COVID has calmed down, I think we're going to get a little bit, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more. But uh, we needed yeah. to uh, have this time off and and re- refocus, you know. Yeah. Yeah. COVID was rough. COVID was really rough for everybody. We didn't we didn't make any money. I, my husband is just he's um he's very careful with our funds. That's just who good. he is. Yeah. And yeah, it is. It really is good. Um, very, very careful. So we had enough to make it through because of him. Had I been in charge? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> we would have been one of the restaurants that probably wouldn't have made it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. No, goodness, but he did. that yeah, I I I I I so appreciate the way he handles the funds like that. You know, I never worry about it. So, well, uh, not my worry. Diversification <laughs> is a key to success, yeah. and you surely sure. have. A di you know, a diverse work life. Tell us a little bit about Peeled, um, the 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 new show that I hear is the first all vegan cast. Of well, let me tell you, um, show. Be Kind. I have to give them a pat on the back. They went way out. They Be Kind. You got to all, even the hairstylist. He couldn't even hire his extra people if they weren't vegan to work on us that uh, a star was not star simmons she was not playing everybody from the camera people everybody was vegan wow. uh, and she um reached out to so many product companies with all these vegan foods that i had no idea existed yeah. which i think is just awesome because she's really giving a shout out to some of everybody which is I, it's just amazing to me. So um, I haven't seen the show. I don't know what the heck the finished product is looking like. Is it one show or many episodes? Well, and it's the same. It's like like I don't know if you've seen Tabitha Brown's show yet, but it's 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 like that. It's like one season. So she's got three three episodes. I think they've already we've already shot. Okay, and yeah, you'll be shooting like more and to I, make a and full I, season. Yeah, and I think they're going to just show you. Maybe they're only going to show you two and do a cliffhanger type type thing but the the thing that i loved about it is she brought animals in of uh, uh, um um uh, companies that take care of animals and i mean she just gave love to the vegan community with yeah. this show i love that and I is it competition it style picked up. it's competition style okay and you're yeah. the host right you're the host i'm just the host with uh shabnam islam i i said that because at first i was like why ain't a judge and, and so that's how it came out of my mouth. Oh, no, I'm just the host, but I'm really happy I'm a host because I get to interact with yeah. a lot more than the judges, you know? So it worked out for me. I, and I can be more of a bet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Just more of my style. And I ain't no real chef like that. So, because really- Yes, you when are. They, no, no, when they, they came up with, I saw a commercial the other day and they called it a, uh, uh, it's a board, a ch charcuter. I was like, what, what kind of board is that? I've never had a board like that. <laughs> I don't know nothing. Well, thank Being you. Being a chef is not about vocabulary. Yeah, and a charcuterie <laughs> board is full of processed meat and cheese. So <laughs> but, but do not my worry. My point is, I never heard of that. And most chefs have heard of that. <laughs> that is my point. And y'all know my point. <laughs> We're not taking the point. Well, you know what, though? <laughs> Chef, I bet you are one of a kind in terms in in many areas of your life. You don't you don't stand on precedent so much. And one of the ways you don't stand on precedent is is how you view aging and how you've approached aging. Tell I mean, you have more energy than most twenty year olds here. So, so tell us about what for someone who's aging and and is having trouble with it. What kind of advice would you give them? to help them reframe that? Mm, wow, that's a good, really such a good question. And um, I can just basically say to you that um, the human body is incredibly intelligent and responds to the love you give it or not. And I personally don't think it's ever too late to love it. Mm -hmm. because when you love I don't know how you don't if you don't love you you cannot love me period and when I say me I'm talking about the whole you're not going to care what happens on this planet because you don't give a shit about yourself so I just say anybody can sit down in a chair and move their arms, movement, or pick a foot up, pick the other leg up. Even if you have to sit down. I started with one push up. By the time 
my birthday arrives in on December 7th, 2022, I am going to be able to do 100 push-ups. I challenge myself to just be able to do one push-up for every year I'm alive. But now I know I can do sets of 10. Mm -hmm. So I'm really going to show out on my birthday and do 100 push-ups. But I started with one push-up. Mm -hmm. And I added a push-up. Every time I could add a push-up, I'd add a push-up. The same with planks. I started with a minute. And every time I could add a little bit more time, I did. So since it's your human journey, I don't care how old you are, since it's your journey, nobody, nobody is going to have the quality of life for you, but you, and it's up to you. I plan on having a fantastic quality of life, and I got about 28 years before I'm 100. I just, I, look. I am not giving the life alert people no money for the whole time I am on this planet. I'm never wearing the necklace. Now, I made that promise to myself. I can only suggest if you're an older person, move and nourish yourself. Do it for you because ain't nobody else going to do it. I'll tell you what Joe Biden will do for you. He'll pass the bill to make your prescription drugs cheaper, you little senior citizen. That's how they do it. That's the setup. So what they do is they know a certain time in your life. Now, when they get to be 50, 60, 70, these drugs are for them. <laughs> That's why the drugs are for seniors. It's such a setup. It's so ridiculous and we fall right into it. No, you don't pass a bill for my medicine. My mm -hmm. food is my medicine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't get me started. <laughs> you, you're started. You have started. It's serious <laughs> though, man. It piss, It really ticks that. me off because it, it just feels like, yeah. it feels like they have the whole thing set up. Because yeah. you come to my school, you give me a pyramid, you give me all this crap you tell me I'm supposed to eat. And then by the time I'm 40 years old, it's making me sick. And you start eliminating some of the stuff you told me to eat when I was a kid. Why didn't you tell me to eat this? And so then you already know that by the time I'm a certain age, all these chemicals, because you don't let me use herbs anymore, you wanna outlaw my herbs and you want me to take chemicals. So then by the time I'm a certain age, the chemicals are gonna be for them. So we're gonna make a ton of money off of them with chemicals. The doctors will make a little bit of money. The pharmaceutical company is gonna make a whole bunch of money and then they're gonna die. So they'll be out the way. I don't like this system. Mm -hmm. I really do not like this system. And the only person that can change it for me is me. Mm -hmm. So Seriously. good food, moving and good thoughts are really and a your good attitude. Love, love. Baby. If we practice more love on how goofy is it of us, a species to be tripping over the complexion of another person's skin is that that's got to be the dumbest <laughs> the dumbest thing on the planet it's just got to i just will never understand it i will never get it in my life mm -hmm. we all come from different beautiful places on a beautiful planet we all have different experiences that we should be I mean, we should be open to sharing these experiences with one another. What was your cuisine when you grew up? Let me tell you what I ate when I grew up. All of this stuff we should be sharing and loving each other for this. And we hating on each other because, okay, mm -hmm. y'all done with me? I'm just, yeah. I'm just you saying. know, that's um, <laughs> the, my favorite line that you, fed to, um, that you fed to Howard Schultz. You said, when this planet ceases to exist for me, hey. sir, it ceases to exist for you. So exactly. what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Yeah, that's it right What there. are we going to do as one? If we only understood it to be as one, the same intelligence that created you, created me, created all of yeah. it. Yeah. And we are supposed to be stewards of this. We're supposed to be taking care of this. 
we're not supposed to be so greedy and so self-centered. Mm-hmm. And I have a friend that, that I, I was just speaking to on Instagram and he was like, yeah, well, you know, my family, we always ate meat and, you know, yeah, I watched Game Changers, but, you know, and I said, you know what? This don't really have nothing to do with you, boo. This is about the whole. You're making this all about what you want to do. Yeah. What we're doing collectively is ruining our planet, is making our home sick for us. Now, once it purges us, it will come back and be just fine without us. But right now, can you take yourself out of the scenario and think about everything else, your home? Can you just do that maybe? Maybe, maybe. You Uh-oh. don't need the meat to be strong. I'm 72 years old doing a 75 push-ups. I can already do them at 72 and I'm not eating meat. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. Please go to Instagram to see these arms. That's, that's like the goal. Yes. To be have Alexander and Babette's arms. Those two, you guys both, the shoulders, the whole, oh, it's just incredible. On plants for many years. Yes, yes. Uh, Chef Babette, I think our audience is going to be, after they're done with this podcast, they're, they're going to have a lot of things to do. They, they need to go to your restaurant, buy your book. Oh, but those can, I ask, can I ask them to do one show. thing for me? Yes. yes. This, this is what, if you do anything for me, follow me. Because for my, my 72nd birthday, I really would love to have 200,000 um, followers. I only have 190. Um, so the, if they if they just... If they like me at all, just tell them to follow Chef Babette Davis on IG, please. I I am sorry, we got your age wrong. Seventy, you're seventy. No, I'm seventy-one. I said you'd be seventy-two. It doesn't I just, matter. I claim seventy-two because I only got two months. Yeah. <laughs> I'm claiming I'm gonna be here December seventh, twenty twenty-two. So I'm already seventy-two. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much for being on our show. We fun, really appreciate it. Go follow. And, and again, we didn't say, where is Peeled going to air? Where can people watch it? Oh, Unchained TV. Oh, awesome. Unchained, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Y'all go Love check it, it out. Yes. Right. Unchained okay. TV. So that's unchainedtv.com. Yeah, right. That's the least I could do. Go. All right. Love you. Anytime. Thank let's you. do this. Great. All right. Mwah. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, folks. Okay. Back by very popular demand is our plant-powered plate fridge magnet, which you are going to receive for free if you leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on. So here are the details. Just write your quick review. Does not need to be long. Does not need to be a whole story. Just be honest and speak from the heart. Then take a quick screenshot of the review you wrote and email it to us at podcast at switchforgood.org. That's podcast at switchforgood.org. And include your mailing address so we can send you a power plate. We are doing this because the more reviews we garner, the higher we go in search results, which means more folks will learn about our podcast. So the power is in your hands. Leave us a review and zoom, zoom, your power plate arrives at your doorstep. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.